Hi, I'm Colleen Doswish. I've been teaching chemistry for 10 years. Hi, I'm Bill Kane. I've also been teaching chemistry for about 10 years. We are going to go through why we are flipping our classrooms this fall, the 2012-2013 school year, for regular chemistry. And there are three main reasons why we want to flip our classrooms. And the first one is we want students to take responsibility for their own learning. Okay. The number two reason why we want to do this is because we want students to be able to use technology in order to facilitate their learning. And the third one is we want to prep them for college. Yeah. A lot of colleges are starting to move towards uh, having online classes, recording lectures and demos, uh, and having those available for students. And we want our students to have that, uh, have the opportunity to understand how to deal with that situation. So in order to talk about how our flipped classroom is going to work, we just want to briefly review how a, uh, how a traditional classroom works. Typically, a traditional classroom is teacher-driven. We have rows of desks facing forward, and students wound up getting talked to more often than not, uh, rather than being talked with. Uh, so when students come in, we go over homework. Uh, we have students take notes over new material, and we usually have a short question period, typically, uh, which means that there's not a lot of time left in class, and students wind up getting sent home uh, to do their own work at home where they don't really have resources. They can't ask the teacher questions because we're not there. Uh, and quite often, they don't have uh, any friends that they, uh, that they can access at home. And uh, does anybody at home remember chemistry? It's been a while. So we move on to the next day. And uh, sometimes students are lost. Those who don't speak up kind of get lost, uh, lost behind. All right, in the flipped classroom, it's going to be very student-centered. The flipped is literally flipping the classroom lectures at home, work during the class. So the homework will be done in class by the students with the teacher there to assist them with any catches they get or any problems they have. Uh, they'll also be working in small collaborative groups to do the homework or the activity or whatever it is they're working on during that class time. There's going to be lots of one-on-one -on -one class time also. There are going to be more labs, more activities, and we're going to be leaning towards, but not yet doing a mastery learning. We'll discuss that later. And the idea is that the students on their own time via the internet will watch 10 to 15 minute lectures. And they're actually us lecturing on a PowerPoint presentation, doing the example problems, just like we do in class. But instead, that's on a video that the students are watching on their own time on YouTube. As far as time management goes in our classrooms, typically we spend the, the same sort of time periods on things. Uh, we have a warm-up activity that takes about five minutes while we're taking attendance and then going over it, of course. Uh, we go over our, our homework with our students, which usually takes us about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, and then we lecture and talk about new stuff in chemistry for 20 to 25 minutes. This doesn't leave us with a heck of a lot of class time to actually do one-on-one -on -one time with our students. So it leaves us guided practice time of about five to ten minutes, which or is less. Yeah, yeah, five to ten minutes is a, is a, is a best case scenario. Uh, and uh, that doesn't leave us with very much time to do things like labs and activities. In the flipped classroom, the warm-up activity will still exist in a five, three to five minutes, warm-up question, a problem, an example, the concept, whatever. And then we'll have about ten minutes to discuss question and answers on the video the students were supposed to watch the night before. And then, then we're going to have the bulk of the class either doing guided practice, meaning that they're doing the work that is connected to the concept, in small groups, or one-on-one -on -one with me, the teacher, or we'll actually be able to get a lab in. Mm -hmm. So our workflow is going to work kind of like this. Students are going to get assigned to watch video. Uh, they're going to watch those on their own time, uh, which means uh, they're going to be able to watch them just about anywhere they go. Uh, YouTube videos are available uh, anywhere that the Internet is accessible, so on iPods, on smartphones, uh, computers, uh, at the library, at home, at a friend's house. There's lots of places where they can watch that. That's going to mean that when they actually come into the class, uh, we're going to get to talk about some practical discussion about, about the theory. Uh, and then we're going to have more time to do that. It's not going to feel as rushed, which means that we're going to be able to get, delve into some deeper problems. So these first three parts of the workflow are going to work rather well. Uh, 
we're going to ask teachers, of course, as we always do, we're going to quiz and assess our students before moving on to the next part of the topic, which will lead us right back into the new concept, which will be another video assignment to watch. Uh, now you can kind of see that this workflow has a cycle that keeps going. It's, it's going to be a little bit cyclical. At some point, we're going to reach the end of a unit, and there's going to be a test. And that's basically the fifth part of the workflow. After the test, we'll start a new topic, which means that we'll start writing on a new video assignment. Some of the benefits to flipping the classroom. There's more one-on-one -on -one class time. More time in class for homework problems, either in one-on-one -on -one situation or in a little small collaborative group. There'll be more labs, more activities, more demonstrations. There'll be time for deeper problems and projects. And when the students are watching the notes or the video of the teacher's PowerPoint presentation, they'll be able to pause or rewind the teacher. They'll be able to learn on their own time. They'll be able to review before the test because the videos will still be available four months later on YouTube when they're studying for the semester final. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're hoping that the students can gain a deeper understanding of the subject when they're not so rushed in a 50-minute period to write something down, because if they miss it, they've missed it. With the videos, they can go back and rewind and rewrite it, or just look it over again, especially because there's a lot of math in chemistry. So they have the option of being able to go back over it to understand the concept better. And I, I know I just circled this part here. The part that I'm really excited about is Students are going to be able to pace them their own learning here. They can pause and rewind their own teacher and learn on their own time. So if that means that if they need to watch the lecture once, they'll watch it once. If they need to watch the lecture two or three times, that's what they need to do. And using that pause and the rewind button is going to be great because as a teacher, I always find that uh, spending time waiting for students to write things down seems somewhat wasteful when some of the students already have everything written down that they need while others haven't. Uh, so this is going to be a great, uh, a great year. I'm really looking forward to flipping the classroom. Yep.